The animation that you saw was my entry to the latest contest by Clean Jones, aka Punisher. If you ever watched the Corridor Crew channel, you'll know that he was a member of this group of CGI artists who are dedicated to create short films and visual effects video analysis. Last month, as usual, Clint launched a new rendering contest for the 3D community. And this time I took the opportunity to join this contest. So in this video I want to show you my process to get these results. Everything that I've learned and all the challenges that I faced. So make yourself comfortable, get something to eat and drink and join me to this journey. To start the project I had to download all the corresponding files and templates from the contest. Fortunately the scene was already pre-made in Blender format, so I just had to open it and analyze what I had to do. I identified the focal point and the area of interest, where I should place the final boss as well as a scale model of our main character. The concept that I chose went to several stages, as it usually happens when you start brainstorming. I had several ideas in my mind, such as creating a miniature scene with a mouse fighting with a giant cat from his perspective. Another idea I considered was a medieval warrior facing a giant biblical accurate angel. You know those giant eyeballs with wings full of eyes? However, the one that I was more attracted to and the one that I finally chose was a representation of the movie Akira. And specifically the final scene when Tetsuo and Kaneda are fighting and the character of Tetsuo is starting transforming to this fleshy mass giant monster. And one of the main reasons why I chose this concept, besides I really like this movie, was the availability of the 3D models, which I could find really easy on Sketchfab. And also was kinda interesting the fact that I had to model a monster like this and I challenged myself by doing it with Geometry Nodes, one of the latest features in Blender. With the concept ready, I began to explore the aesthetic that I wanted. I was already familiar with the characters and the story, having seen this final scene many times. The biggest challenge at this point was how to translate the anime style into a 3D representation. I considered the cell shading technique in the style of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, but finally I opted to stick with a 3D realistic aesthetic, because I had more than clear that it wouldn't be enough time to study the Spider-Man aesthetic and how to recreate it. So I took some screenshots from the movie and passed them through Stable Diffusion Artificial Intelligence to find the right aesthetic I was looking for, at least for this amorphous mass. And these were the results that the AI gave me. Mm, this kinda looks between morbid and disgusting, just what I needed. With the aesthetic defined, I started working on the scene, downloaded the model of Kanera and his motorcycle and made an initial animation blockout, marking the keyframes to evaluate the image composition and animation. I continued with the creation of the monster, which was basically a geosphere with a lot of displacement. There's no much mystery in this process. For the creation of the monster's texture, by following this tutorial I managed to create this shader that looks kinda fleshy mass with veins, which added a lot to the look of the character. The next challenge here was creating the environment. I tried to recreate the stadium from the final scene. I started by designing a cornice where Kaneda will be standing with his motorcycle. I created a grandstand with a simple shape and a lot of arrayed modifiers. I remodeled these triangle shaped lights and all these details started to give the sensation of scale to the scene. And finally I started kitbashing the scene with very simple elements that I download from Quixel Bridge, Sketchfab and the Blender Kit add-on. I added smoke plus a volumetric shader to give depth. I used an HDRI for the lighting. Considering that the scene was at night, the HDRI influence would be minimal. Then to distribute these pebbles, I used a particle system in hair mode, which allowed me to scatter the pebbles and other objects 
along the surface of the floor. Combined with a vertex paint technique, it made so easy the distribution of these elements without the need to do it manually one by one. The process consists of adding elements to the scenes and adjusting their position to follow an overall composition that focused the attention on the center of the action and avoiding distractions. For example, the pieces of concrete that were closest to the camera were placed on the sides of the composition so it doesn't distract from the main action. Then in the back, to simulate Tetsuo's psychic powers, I created a couple of planes which by adding them a particle system I was able to generate this inverse cascade of models which gave the sensation of floating in the air. During this period I alternate between different tasks such as importing the volumetric gases and creating particle systems. In the contest, all the participants were provided with a free month license of Embergen, a powerful tool which allows you to make real-time smoke and fire simulations, using the power of your graphics card to make all this process. This was an interesting addition to the process, which in the end, I couldn't use it to make the kind of simulation that I wanted to show, so I ended up using Blender's smoke simulation tools for this purpose. And then I used Geometry Notes and this tutorial to make this simulation of the tentacles of the monster, which explains how to make this Venom-ish effect and all with Geometry Notes. This helped to give life to the scene, especially on the sides and the edges of the composition. After all these stages, I added the tire smoke simulation, as well as a touch of smoke to create a more immersive environment. And also I animated the laser that Kanita shoots. After all these additions, I made multiple renders to test different lighting and composition settings, as well as to make a lot of adjustments. Finally, it was time to click the render button and hope for the best. There were a few frames where the lighting and Tetsuo or the monster animation looked a little bit strange. There were also some problems like popping in the animation of the tentacles and some shadows that appeared and disappeared. But at this point we were really close to the deadline, so I decided to leave it just like that. Since I was already close to the delivery date, I went straight to DaVinci Resolve, where I made additional adjustments to effects and lightings. I made some color corrections, added a little touch of chromatic aberration in the brightest parts, some glow effects, and finally a film grain filter to wrap everything up. And that guys, that's all the process that I had to pass through to get this final result. And now guys, this was how I exported everything and sent the clip to the contest. And to be honest guys, from the few works that I saw on the community discord, as well in some of the top 100 finalists, I can only express admiration and a healthy feeling of competition, knowing that there's so much talent and creativity out there. The truth is that in the day that I'm recording this video, I don't know if my clip ended up to the top 100 finalists, which I honestly doubt it. If it does, yay! And applause for my past self. And if not, you don't know how much fun I had doing this project. Discovering new tools and pushing a little bit more my limits as a 3D artist. As I always say, try to use these contests and challenges to push yourself a little bit more. Try to learn new tools and techniques which are gonna make you grow as a professional 3D artist. And guys, that is the most valuable thing that you can learn from this contest. Contests. So guys, that's it for this video. Tell me here down in the comments what do you think about my clip? Did you participate in this contest? Would you try to do a project like this? I want to read all your comments down below. And now that you're down there, click the like button if you liked the video or if you learned something new today. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of the new videos that we upload. Follow us on our social networks, we have Facebook, Instagram and TikTok, as well as on my Instagram, TikTok and Spotify accounts. You can support this channel sharing this video with the people that you think that this information or this content could be helpful. 
And guys, that's it for today's video. And just remember that this is XVS Studio Cinematica. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.